Welcome everyone to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. When I say this joke, the show is jam packed. This is a jam packed show, but we're gonna try to get it under an hour, an hour or so maybe. But if we go on over, it'll be it'll be surely worth it. Joining me again to sort of discuss, not sort of, but discuss and decipher and also expand on the possibilities that we had described in earlier shows. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> we know, we, and listen, we're not going to always be 100%, but we're going to be in the same vicinity, you know? So stick with us. Now, joining me once again is Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? What's going on, Pablo? It's like we took the, uh, it's like we took the entire Avengers Assemble from Endgame, <laughs> put it into one Quinjet. That's yes. pretty much what this show is. Yes, this is going to be a. You, you often don't hear these words, but when you hear it, you're like, it's appropriate. This one's going to be a doozy. This one's going to be good. We're going to start off as always. First, before I get into it, I just want to say thank you to all the subscribers, to all the uh, people that have liked and shared and commented or even texted me or emailed me. Thank you. You know, those likes those shares, those comments really do help the channel. So please continue to do so uh, and keep on tuning in. We're going to keep it the same way. We're going to get into We're going to flip it up a little bit, though. We're going to change it up. First, we used to always talk about Marvel, but we're going to go into the industry news first. Disney earnings just happened December 10th. Uh, we have an investor day streaming. Yeah, we're getting technical. Yeah. We're bringing a different world to you guys at home. <laughs> you know, uh, Universal. Yeah. Um, didn't that Cinemark and, and there's another one, Cineplex. Uh, so there's one, one in, so they've done two deals in the US and one in Canada, all with the same structure. Okay. Go back to our podcast, people, and yep. listen to what we had said. Then we got some MCU news. A lot of MCU news. Oh, before we get into the MCU news, we have to also talk about in the industry news, Wonder Woman. They tapped out. You know what's tapping out when you, that's it. You got to do it. Or else it may be, you know, no. Who know people may get tired of seeing new new and new trailers and delays people lose interest they say enough is enough hbo max december 25th wonder woman 84. no more delays mcu news thor chris pratt then these are all in Australia. They're rumored to be shooting very, very soon, early next year or something. January. January. A lot of stuff is happening in January. A lot of things are starting in January. When we spoke about last time that there's going to be crazy content, again, go back to the videotape. We said that this is going to be there's going to be a crazy 2021. WandaVision. We thought it was going to be in December. You see, sometimes we're off. We're not always right. But a month later, still ain't bad. <laughs> you know, a month later, still. I'm, I'm curious to find out what are your thoughts on. Um, uh, on why we didn't get in December and they decided to wait. Um, we've recently gotten some Miss Marvel uh set photos this looks 
it, I'm yo, I'm so curious about this because I don't know if it can work. But because when that girl was announced, I'm like, who wouldn't like this this girl? You know, Miss Marvel, very popular character, by the way. And they do we already seen some nice things. Uh Moon Knight. Also gearing up to shoot early next year. 2021, any months you've heard? First quarter. That's all I've heard. I, I heard Oscar, I, well, we'll talk about it, but Oscar Isaac basically is finishing up a, another project and supposedly is going to go quarantine and then and then do this. You hear, you hear that? What did we say last week? What did we say last week? Quarantine. Then let's go. And look at look look is look at the, the 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 policies and the standards that are being implemented so that people can start moving. Black Panther two starting the talks of about shooting next next summer, right? Supposedly confirmed July. Okay, caught me off guard how quick that was, but yeah, I know, right? Um. There's also talk about some rumor that um, Chadwick was going to be CGI'd into the movie. Talk about that, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll talk about that. DC News. Obviously, we are going to already be talking about Wonder Woman heading over to HBO Max. Um, but I think we'll probably discuss a little bit more about the business decision behind that and then talk about um, yeah. it going into HBO Max and... I mean, I'm excited to see it. I'm 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 excited to see because I understand Patty Jenkins and not wanting to release this because she this is her movie and she thinks it's dope and she wants to see it on in theaters with everybody to watch it. I, I get that, but she tapped out too. Stallone in the Suicide Squad, another multiverse hopper or universe hopper he's in uh guardians of the galaxy we saw him as in guardians of the galaxy 2 is it confirmed that he's going to be in guardians of the galaxy 3 rumored i'm not sure it's confirmed although he seems to have a very close relationship with james gunn at this point so yeah so yeah he'll definitely be in there i wonder what his role would be would it be it's not going to be like a cameo like it was last time Amber Heard is refuting Aquaman 2 rumors that she's out. I don't know. Because a lot of people don't like her right now. Because people love Johnny Depp. So... I'm telling you, man, I don't think Aquaman 2 gets done. I don't know. It's gonna this is gonna be a, a very costly film. This is gonna cost more than the first one. I'm I'm saying it right now. Constantine 2. Listen, Constantine, I wasn't all really that much into Constantine. I liked him in uh Justice League Apocalypse. Dark or Ju- Ju- Justice League Dark Apocalypse, the last sort of film in the universe in animation. I don't know if you saw it, Brian. I didn't see that one. I, I actually liked this movie. You gotta see it. You gotta see it. Yeah. You gotta see it. You actually like Constantine? Uh, let's put it this way I didn't have a lot of expectation for it, and I was entertained. Got it. Some good actors in that movie. And actually, they caught them early. You know what? I might have to watch it because you recommend it. We'll probably do that a few times, recommend some shows. But um, I did like him in Justice League Dark. I don't know if it was Apocalypse or Dark. I don't know which one of the two. But that movie was very, very, very good. This was, uh, this was one you got to watch because Superman gets angry. This is like the first time I saw him like angry, yo, at his people. Because usually Superman is the guy you talk to, whatever, right? He's Superman. And this dude was upset. So that was dope. And this is going to be a week. I think we might have to do a separate show, the Snyder saga or whatever. 
Snyder Cut updates. More people. Um, more revelations. I don't know what to say really about Steppenwolf. How much better? This is all about how much better this will be. And Stephen Wolf, I don't know. Then we'll talk a little bit about um, some Star Wars news. Um, the show, that last show, I got to say, man, was uh, very impressive. That's, you know, bringing characters to life, man. That's, that's, one, that's one thing that is hard to pull off. Um, and more, and, and, and let's talk also. Like I said, this is a long show. This is a very long show. Um, Lucas had a plan, ladies and gentlemen. He had a plan. And unfortunately, because of what had occurred with Disney, you know, he had a $4 billion? Sure. <laughs> Here, take it. Right? But some of that hurts a little bit because you want to, this was yours, yo, this was yours. This was yours. So we'll talk, this, again, there's a lot to, to talk about. Brian. Disney. Disney Plus. They recently had an earnings call and now they have a planned on December 10th and an investor day. It's going to be streamed, right? Yeah. Of course, it'll Street. be on their. Yep, just go to their investor relations part of their website. I'm sure it'll be up there for everyone to listen. Oh yeah, sure. And it's, and, me and it's meant for the investment community, but it's publicly available. So that's you know, great. We're gonna be this is this technology has allowed it to be that much closer to the companies. Yeah. So what did you uh, come out of thinking when? listening or i don't know if you read or listened to the earnings call um and what you also think about december 10th and what we think we'll hear from them sure so i actually read the transcript that is also publicly available you can just google disney earnings call transcript and you'll find it it's out there word for word so things that jumped out to me some of which have made the mainstream rounds some of which haven't so Bob Chapek was asked about Mulan being a sort of $30 pay-per-view type event on the service versus Soul is going to be released on December 25th simply as part of the service. So if you're a subscriber or you want to sign up to become a subscriber, you can just see Soul and no additional charges. Someone asked, well, why? Why, why that decision? And I thought his response was very telling. He used the phrase Mulan. He kind of said there were a lot of issues around Mulan that didn't have anything to do with streaming. They had to do with mm -hmm. Mulan. But he said there was enough there to show us that we are onto something with our, quote, premier access strategy. So if you recall on our podcast, one of the ideas that I threw out there was this idea that streaming services that we pay monthly fees for now might move to a model where you you know you pay a certain fee to get to a certain level of content and then if you pay additional fees you can get additional content i don't know what else the phrase premier access strategy could possibly refer to other than there is going to be another tier of pricing for certain things that they intend to put on the service and it's going to be dependent on what the audience is so clearly the audience for mulan in their eyes probably more adult then for Seoul, so that it may have been a test run, but they clearly are happy enough with what happened there to move forward with the concept. So that was number one for me. Number two, December 10th is a Disney investor day, but it sounds like streaming strategy will be front and center throughout. I think the number one thing I want to look out for, having read the transcript, is right now Disney Plus is really a US-centric business. A lot of countries overseas do not have access to this right now, which is part of why I think Disney has been hesitant to take something like a Black Widow and think about that as a streaming venture because 
these movies do huge global box. They're not going to leave that audience hanging. So what I am guessing is on December 10th, you will get some kind of timeline or framing of a global distribution strategy for Disney plus. And I think that will be very telling as far as their decisions for what they move onto the service from here. I think once the whole world can have access to this is game on for putting these things on the service. That's number two. Um, and then I think number three is something that we've heard following after that, which to your point is you know, even with the parks and they talked a lot about the difficulty they're going through at the parks they are kind of saying like, look, people are, people are making reservations up to the limited capacity that the park can sustain right now. Clearly the numbers of COVID right now are not going to help any of that. Yeah. But a point of emphasis was that they have more than enough cash on hand as is to spend big on streaming. And you, I think after the earnings call, you already saw a couple of other sort of Disney properties, not in our genre. Mm-hmm. They mentioned Cruella and some things like that, that would be sent to Disney plus rather than to the theater. Yeah. So I think that is clearly headed toward Remember, third point, the activist investor who wants them to spend more on streaming. Here is management saying we agree. Maybe we don't necessarily need to cut the dividend to do that, but we got a lot of cash on hand, more than a lot of competitors do to throw at this idea. So I think also on December 10th, you will get more framing of just how much money they intend to put into this business on an annual basis. And I don't think it's going to be small. So that would be my like main takeaways from, from the earnings call. Would you, do you have a range as to what, I mean, the, 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 I I guess the, the minimum or the number that was priorly thrown out there for how much they could possibly spend on content was 3 billion. So, I don't know. So what I can't see, and I I haven't looked at their balance sheet well and their cash flow statement to see how much cash they're generating now with the parks being what they are. So that's the biggest thing. I don't know. Um, But the number that was quoted was they still had $18 billion of cash on hand today. So like if you said they didn't generate another cent, they still had 18 billion to work with. So, you know, if it's 3 billion for the dividend, and they're clearly going to earn some cash from the parks, from merchandise, and from Disney Plus. I would say, if three billion was the bogey, I certainly think they could hit that in an annual basis, maybe even more, depending on where they wanted to to throw their investment dollars. So, it's going to be in the billions. Not going to let's put it this way: a company that big is not going to talk about things of this nature in that forum unless it, you know if 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 the number was going to be a couple hundred million. That's not enough to move the needle. So, yeah, I would expect several billion at least to be sort of on the table. And the question is more just how do they pay for it? Do they, you know, does it have to be the dividend? Do they borrow more debt? There's different things a company can do like Disney to get to those numbers. But what did their stock do? Well, I mean, well, so the stock was up. But keep in mind, like we also had a week where vaccine news was pretty positive across the board. So Disney is clearly a stock that people would say because of the, because of the parks business and the movie business is exposed to that. So I think the day that the, um, the first sort of trials came back from the Pfizer drug and 90% effective, I think Disney might've been up 10% the next day. So hard to tell, like, was it, is it the earnings or is it sort of hope for society yeah, yeah. getting closer to normal? But you know, suffice to say, December 10th is going to be, let's put it this way. Let's watch the stock on December 10th and 11th. That might tell you a little more about yeah. what people think yeah. about. Damn so. I should get in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm not giving any advice. <laughs> no, no, I no, just no. report what no, they're no, talking no, about. No, I hear you. I hear you. But I, listen, I've been thinking about this for a minute. It's not like I haven't, you know, even before when I knew, I know what Disney's trying to do, man. With all Star Wars, Disney, all this stuff. You kidding me? By the way, I did want to point out, if you're looking for a small silver line, is could you imagine the position Disney would be in this year if they had last year's calendar? Think about that. If they hadn't been able to put Endgame, Rise of Skywalker, Captain Marvel, if they had not been able to bring those to theater, they got lucky. They got lucky in the sense that 2020 
is a hundred percent gonna be, was gonna be their quiet year. Yeah, they got lucky with yeah. that. Wow, wow, I can't even fathom. I can't even think about that. Universal has made some deals, and this is just the beginning. Go back to our previous shows. Well, they clearly listened to our show and then went and did it. <laughs> <laughs> if they're here, yes. But if you're here for the first time, go back so you can be like, oh, snap. <laughs> right? <laughs> Universal made a deal with Cinemark. I'll leave the numbers to you. I read it, but I, I read the numbers, but I don't remember them. Um, and I know you're good with numbers. <laughs> and... They we just recently got news that they also made a similar deal with Cineplex in Canada. Is this just the beginning, Brian? Hundred percent. So, if you go back to one of the prior shows, one of the things that that we speculated on was that coming out of COVID, you would see a renegotiation of the relationship between studios and theaters, which historically was a 50-50 split of box office. And when a movie went to the theater, it typically for three months, the theater owned the movie. So there was nothing, you couldn't bring it to a streaming service, you couldn't bring it to premium cable, that it was 90 days yeah. minimum yeah. before any property could then be rebroadcast somewhere else. So at the time, I kind of threw out this idea that like, listen, I mean, these studios are going to be sitting on a ton of content and the theaters are all going bankrupt or pretty close to bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So they're going to come back and say, OK, it used to be 50 50. How about we how about we change some of that? You want our content? We're going to change how this deal works. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. So let's look at how. So Universal has now done a deal with two of the three largest theater chains in the US, AMC and Cinemark. Regal's the lone holdout. And now they've done one with one of the largest ones in Canada. So here's the changes so people understand. So remember, I mentioned the 90-day exclusivity window historically. That is now going to be 17 days from 90, so from three months to two weeks. Depends. Unless, okay, unless the movie's opening weekend is greater than $50 million, in which case it will be 31 days, so one month. Now, since you said we like numbers, so for, for 2019, here is the list of $50 million opening weekends. So you tell me what's kind of familiar about the names on this list. Avengers Endgame, Rise of Skywalker, Captain Marvel, Lion King, Frozen 2, Toy Story 4, Joker, Spider-Man Far From Home, Aladdin, It Chapter 2, How to Train Your Dragon, Shazam, Hobbs and Shaw, John Wick 3, Jumanji The Next Level, and Us. Eight of the top 10 are Disney properties, okay? And most of this list is comic book superhero genre, animated film, or Disney live action adaptation. And even the stuff that's not in that category is franchise, like How to Train Your Dragon, franchise, Hobbs and Shaw, franchise, John Wick 3, franchise. Only It Chapter 2 and Us would qualify as sort of one-off, or two-part individual stories, which means this deal is all about getting the movies and that we care the most about out of the theater and into streaming a lot faster than it used to be. So if instead of 90 days, it's 30 days. And now in exchange for that, the theaters will get a small cut of the streaming revenue once it goes to the service. So voila, the studio now has much better economics on big budget ten pole films than they had before. They have more control and the theaters get a little bit for their trouble, which is they get to share in some of the success of streaming going forward. It's a huge deal. It's clearly the new norm for the industry. And I think it's only a matter of time before you see similar deals. I agree with you 100%. I'm quite certain that someone was thinking, hey, you know how much content is out there that yep. hasn't been shown? With all the content that's out there, 
there's no way that some of these films would probably there there'll be a lot of competition because of the, just there's just so much content that hasn't been released. Big stuff. Oh, what what do you keep hearing? Film done. Film is done. This movie wrapped. They're starting on this. They're starting on that. They're, 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 they're looking at, at it. This is what we have to do. Because there's no, we, we, what, we can't bargain our way into thinking we can get similar de a similar deal that we, that's all that is changing. Well, here's the other part, which as fans, you know, we've been asking this question. It's going to be great for us, but even asking how much is too much. Think about this from the theater's perspective. So why would they be okay with this other than, hey, they're, they're kind of struggling financially? Well, so after 30, if, if, if a studio is making a lot more of these films in a given year because they're the kind of films that make money, if you're the theater... On day 32, so let's say that would be week five of a film that's out, even, even an Avengers level film. Do you want week five of the Avengers all to yourself? Or do you want the opening weekend to the next film that weekend? It's no brainer. You want the opening weekend every time because that's where the big money is. Yeah. So now the studio says, great, I have more slots in the calendar to put more big budget films yeah. and the theater says okay you can take the old one and yeah if it's doing great and gets great reviews we'll leave it on one or two screens of our 18 screens but now we're going to put you know nine so let's let's look at next year's calendar let's say it doesn't move again it probably will but okay so black widow supposed to be may yeah Shang, or Shang Chi is supposed to be July. Wow. Well, let's say if, let, let's imagine for a second Black Widow was pushed back to June. So now they're like a month apart. Yeah. Well, in this scenario, it's great. You just have Black Widow run for a month. You throw it on streaming if you want to catch up with it. There, Shang Chi goes right into the next spot. More money for everybody. On the other tier, though. <laughs> yeah. No. No doubt. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. But I think this. This is also helping address that log jam that you're talking about and making studios and theaters more comfortable with getting more of this type of movie onto the big screen, which is, you know, admittedly for mid budget and indie and smaller film, it's tough because it's tough to survive with this sort of this structure. But this structure is built around, as we said, animated comic book superhero franchise. That's what these deals are built on. Imagine every month you get a, a, a great movie coming out. Well, a movie you've been done is things are just going to be coming out faster. Mm -hmm. And if you can't catch it, if you if you're one of those people that don't like to go to the movies and be around people, whatever the case may be, you see it a month later. You don't have to wait three months or four months if, if it's amazing. Yeah. This leads us up to Wonder Woman. Yes. Patty Jenkins tap, tapped out. You hear a lot of tapping these days. They said, I said no mas. Let's, let's let's get it out there. She had previously said in the past, one hundred percent, we're not thinking about putting it in the mo in the on streaming platforms. We want to put it out in the movie theaters. It's her movie. She's proud of it, right? She wants to see it being shown in theaters with everybody, whatever, right? But this doesn't look like is gonna or is going to be something that transpires soon where they were trying to keep a date now you know we, these cases keep going up what do we get more delays and you can't keep delaying this stuff because what after a while if you put out keep on putting trails we're gonna probably put the movie together <laughs> you know like a puzzle and then we see the whole joint you know, it, we'll get too much of the movie by then. And then it's, and if you don't show anything, people may forget. So it's like, what do you do? You tap out and you say, we got to put it out. Let's, let, let's let the people see it. What do you think about that? Well, tap out implies defeat 
I don't know. I I guess I'm more in the gratitude mode. I say thank you, no, which no, is no, 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 you know, no. I think this is this is this is the franchise that DC has gotten the most right of all the things they've done. And I, you know, I think we got kind of the bummer news that WandaVision was being pushed to January. And then we got the Christmas gift that this was going to go right in its place. Let's, I, you know, here, here's what I, with the article that that talked about, there's an article out there, I think it's in Variety, that talked about the decision that went into this. Mm -hmm. One of the things that jumped out to me was there was a blurb in there that said they expect to lose money on this movie. So this movie had a $200 million budget figure they spent who knows 50 something in mark million in marketing which means that normally if that was going to a theater you would have needed to make about 600 550 to 600 million global to to make money the first one made 820 so they clearly thought they had a billion dollar movie with this so the the reason why i think this makes a lot of sense though is and i'm not totally convinced they're going to lose money on it is number one to your point, look at how much more crowded the marketplace was going to be next year. I don't care how good this movie was yeah. was going to be, releasing it next summer or next Christmas, you'd have been up. You would have been up against a Marvel movie almost for sure. And if you weren't up against that, you'd have been up against like Top Gun or you know something equally big, Fast Fast and Furious Nine, like whatever that was going. to... So, I think by putting this here they recognize that there is a real starvation for content like this. And so for a service, which really needs subscribers, I mean, this is a grand slam. I, I would point out, we one other point about Disney, the, the piece of content that drew the most new subscribers to Disney plus all year was Hamilton. Hamilton. It wasn't yeah. Mandalorian or anything. It was yeah. Hamilton. And yeah. Wonder Woman 1984 is on that kind of scale. Yeah. Now, I think, you can comment, I think they're going to do away with the free trial because they're not going to leave. I think you're going to have to pay, as a, be a paying subscriber to get yeah. this on Christmas Day. Yeah, of course. you got. Because Disney did the same thing with Hamilton. You couldn't do a free Disney Plus trial when, they, when oh, that yeah. went up just to see that. And you saw the result of that. Huge. And people stuck around. So I think they will find the audience is salivating for this especially if the reviews are as good as the first one and i think they have the platform kind of all to themselves even one division as great as it may be is still a serial it's a series right this is a film there is a different you know sort of association with that so i'm not as convinced they're going to lose money on this if, they, if all the revenue is going back to them and they're not sharing it plus they are releasing it globally yeah. Where we've seen in certain countries, Tenet actually was able to do well, and Wonder Woman, the first movie, did quite well overseas. Yeah. So, I, I think they, I think They'll this be all right. end up doing better than they think. Yeah, and actually, especially if it's good. Yeah, I mean, it may not do a billion. That probably is out yeah, of play. Yeah, yeah, but... that's, yeah, that's definitely not in play. But I think over the long run, you you know, you'll keep making money, right? Well, plus, isn't this the bridge to the Snyder Cut? I mean, it's, so if this goes on the service now in December, Snyder Cut comes, call it next summer, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. And then in theory, you've got Peacemaker and Suicide Squad somewhere behind that. Yeah. Hey, that's that's at least the foundation of the service. For a minute. Yeah. You got to at least pay attention to HBO Max if you're a fan of the genre now. Of course, of course. The speed at which... Movies are come. Our movies are going to be coming out. I sort of compare it, and I also want to mention something about the tapping out thing because I want to make myself clear. Um, the speed at which these movies are coming out, I compare it almost to how for or for how long you talk about a show when you've binged it. How long afterwards are you talking about? Because like, if you're watching bat, uh, Breaking Bad week to week, you're talking about Breaking Bad for a minute, right? But after you binge it, it sticks around a very short time before the next thing comes up and you're talking about that. By delaying Wonder Woman any further and then putting it in that bucket that's already packed people are going to see it 
and then they're going to see the next thing, and then nobody's really talking about your movie anymore. So they had they did what they had to do. They did what they had to do. And and listen, I meant I mean tapping out to the thought of either of of delaying it further, because they kept on. How many times did they delay it? Like two, three times. They did, and I, and I'm a little sad because I you know I, I think th- this is the kind of movie that I think we'd agree you see it on a big screen. There's an yeah. impact to that that you're going to lose here. But let's also keep in mind like the parent company of of HBO Max, like Warner Warner Brothers, is struggling in a lot of its other businesses. AT and T Warner is struggling in a lot. We talk about Disney's parks, but like Disney's in a much better, stronger balance sheet, cash position. So there's a little more desperation behind the scenes here to yeah. get cash in the door yeah. and like how i mean to your point like how much longer can you sit on at least what you perceive to be the surest bet you have yeah. um I, you know so i then they made a business decision. this was a yeah. pure business decision obviously yes on, on behalf of patty jenkins i'm sure she wants people to see her movie you know she's proud of this what she accomplished with that movie and she's been talking about it forever that's it how, how long are you gonna keep talking about it Right, it, it, you know, it's just time. Wow, that's just interesting news. <laughs> I know. <laughs> MCU, Thor, Love and Thunder. We're getting uh, talk that uh, the actors for that film are starting to gear up to shoot in Australia. They're already in Australia, uh, according to some um, articles out there. Um, and they're ready to shoot. Um, a lot of things are starting in January or, or next year, or early next year. Um, and you spoke to me earlier, prior to the show, you spoke to me about people talking about this being sort of like a semi-Avenger type situation, similar to Civil War. There's a Hollywood Reporter article out talking actually about Black Panther 2, but there's a reference in there to Thor Love and Thunder. And the quote is that the movie has an Avengers 5-like feel because of this immense ensemble cast, which we already knew a lot of the go-tos from Thor. You know, mm-hmm. Chris Hemsworth and Natalie Portman is back and you know, Tessa Thompson's still there. But now we, you know, now we get a confirmation that Chris Pratt is in this movie, as we know at the end of Endgame, you know, Thor went off with the Guardian, so that makes sense. We also have rumors that Vin Diesel, which I think is a little curious because Vin Diesel, it's only his voice. So why is he even physically in Australia unless they're up to something else? So that's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, there was also a report, I think, that Jamie Alexander, who played Lady Sif, might be back in this movie as well. Uh, and then, of course, Christian Bale is 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 the villain. So I see what they're talking about. But the, the phrase Avengers 5-like feel, as to your point, it evokes kind of like, is it like Captain America Civil War? Like, do we actually have like a, a real cast of superhero characters beyond just the Thor characters? But yeah. um, it sounds like the scale is big. I mean, it sounds like they're going they're they, they're going big. I know Natalie Portman mentioned the silliness in some of the interview rounds. But you know, yeah. now we're getting sort of the view that maybe this is this is more the blockbuster scale that we're we're used to so yeah so it's kind of a, kind of exciting though to get a confirmation the guardians are definitely in this movie in some capacity yeah Vin Diesel I think just wants to go hang out <laughs> <laughs> he wants to hang out let me do my good thing get pay, get paid millions of dollars and chill I I I'd want to go to Australia too man uh WandaVision uh we spoke of it in our last show was it our last show i think it was our last show where we mentioned that obviously that we're gonna see it very very soon and we were talking about december so we were off by a month but january is still very soon so it's not like we were wrong um i'm curious to know why they sort of wanted to wait that extra month and not release it in December. What are your thoughts on that? So I guess I could come up with two explanations, one of which I think is more likely than the other. So the one explanation would be that the amount of post-production and effects work and sound work, just they couldn't get it done in time to get it out. 
in December. That's one possibility. I think that's the less the less likely possibility. Mm -hmm. I think the more likely possibility is they didn't want to compete with Seoul. I think if you look at the calendar, Mando dropped right at the end of October. They wanted to clear the runway for Seoul on December 25th. Mm -hmm. And then they bring this out at the start of 2021. And it has that difference of 20 days has no impact on their other calendar. So I think my guess is more along the lines that they wanted to spread out the Pixar from the Marvel versus if you look at when Mandalorian would have ended, if you assume they didn't want to have Mandalorian running new shows at the same time WandaVision was coming out, it would have put you into the week of Christmas, basically, where WandaVision would have had to come out, in which case it would have been right on top of Soul's release. So that's my... I have no inside info. I'm just looking at the calendar. That's my best guess. Yeah, I I, I was thinking the same thing uh, that, you know, there's other stuff going on and you want, I mean, like what comes out in January? <laughs> you know, it's January, but you can have the whole month of January and then beyond when you start because everybody's going to be watching. So I get the move. Um but, you know, we're getting it very soon and I'm very excited for it. Uh, if you want to listen to our insight, please listen to our, our other shows where we talk very, uh, uh, we, where we go in depth about WandaVision and what could transpire and what's going on. Um, Miss Marvel, we've seen uh, some set photos. Uh, we see some set photos of her dressing up as Miss Marvel. As Captain Marvel. As Captain Marvel. Yes, 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 yes. yes. See her riding her bike. I mean, listen, this has that Disney feel to it, but in in, in the MCU, uh, she's you know nobody knows her, and this is our first introduction to this actress. And uh, Marvel must have loved it. Disney must have loved it. They say, "Yo, let's do this," and they're already on it. Tell me what you think. Same. I mean, it, it reminds me a little bit. I know it's a, a sort of a Sony Marvel cross, but like when Tom Holland first popped up as, as Peter, we didn't know who Tom Holland was. You know, he pops up and you're like, oh, he, he looks like a, he looks a lot like a high school age Peter Parker. I, I don't know this guy, but he looks the part. Huh? Be, so I kind of felt this had the same reaction of like seeing her and just some, you know, even not her actual costume, but just sort of the, the nod to the Brie Larson sort of Captain Marvel costume. Like, yeah, she looks the part. She looks the part. Also, by the way, I just want to go back to, we got set photos of this within like a day of them shooting. And I'm telling you, man, they kept Shang-Chi under wraps. I'm just pointing this out to people. How many set photos we get? One day they yeah. showed it. Shang-Chi, we, we got like nothing for the entire production. I still don't know how to pull that off. But anyway, so... I think she looks great. And, um, you know, look, I mean, it just shows you we're closer to getting these things are on the move. We'll talk about Moon Knight in a second, but like they're, you know, this thing's already filming now, which means, you know, calendar 2021 should be, it should be out. This, uh, I'm not going to like, imagine we had next year, this year. <laughs> I, I'll be home. Uh, we, I, I, there would be a lot of shows. I don't know, man. I would have been. We would have been doing a lot of shows. Yeah. Next, so prepare yourselves. Hold, I'm getting my financial upgrade your situation. internet. Upgrade your internet. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Word. I'm at a gig. I'm trying to find out how to get more. <laughs> I want no distractions and no interruptions. Moon Knight, another show that's gearing up to fil film early in 2021. As you mentioned in our, in our prior conversation before we started the show, Oscar Isaacs is uh, finishing up some th some other project, and then he's gonna quarantine, which is seems to be the protocol of all uh, 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 projects, right? So they can get going because yeah. that's it. We got to keep going, business, business. Well, especially because a lot of Probably these are in different yeah. countries too, so they yeah. have to. Yeah, they have yeah. to go through protocol. Yeah. So, listen. Hopefully, we get that fourth quarter, maybe, or, or let's see. Because the way they're moving on these things, you never know. Because the the way the boys is moving, they're moving quickly. So, yeah. I, I would hope we get it at least fourth quarter or early first quarter of twenty twenty two. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think Miss Miss Marvel clearly is going to have a couple months head start, so it sounds like that one we might get first. But if they're shooting this in the first quarter of 2021, yeah, I'd say fighting chance. You know, by by December, you know, maybe January next year. But yeah, I think it just shows you we're a lot closer to. I mean, as I said, I mean Disney plus 73 million subscribers with very limited original content. I mean, really Mandalorian, the flagship show. I mean, I, I watched the Right Stuff remake. That's actually pretty good, but uh, I think. But um, think about Disney Plus, you know, 18 months from now when they've got four, five, six, seven of these type of shows up there running live. I mean, yeah. running new. How, that's how much is a, a basic membership or a subscription for a Disney Plus? Six ninety nine dollars okay. per month. Let's say, so let's say $7. And they have how many subscribers? 73 million is what they said on their earnings. I'm seven. That's yeah. A month. Uh, yes, just two easy. Two easy. Two easy. No, no, no. Two easy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. Black Panther. This is big. I didn't see this coming. Yeah. Black Panther is also starting next year in the in June in the July, I think it's July in Atlanta. They said that's what they're doing. Yeah. And there's some talk about, you know, if you've listened to our previous podcast, you'll know what we think about the the topic that'll keep coming up about replacing Chadwick or giving the Black Panther mantle to Shuri or to uh, Umbaku. And I feel like they should just recast and keep the story going because I feel, and I'm going to keep on saying it, that the Black Panther doesn't live and die with Chadwick. You know, we honor him by keep by keeping it going. He represented more than just, you know, the Black Panther is a mantle, is a platform for actors to continuously keep on doing it the way James Bond is, a franchise. You keep doing that. That's the way you honor Chadwick. So a hundred years from now, you say, who was the first black? Chadwick will live forever. If you do it this way, he will never be forgotten. But it should, what I'm saying is it shouldn't die with Chadwick. And you know, so we've also heard that you know they're they're doing that they're, they're not going to do the CGI thing. We talked about that, yeah. and we we I think we shook out in agreement with them, which is you couldn't do this in a way that was respectful to him. Yeah. So I don't know. What you you've already heard my my thoughts. Listen to our previous show because we went in on that. We went in on that. That was a good show. That's one of our most watched shows. I don't know, Brian. I think. They've been, they haven't, this is the first step, this announcement. This is the first step into finding out what exactly they're going to do about this situation. All we, we have no confirmations. All we have is what people want and what, and what Marvel should do. What they should do is to keep, they should, they should keep it moving, get the right person. Again, the Black Panther, the Black Panther mantle, it shouldn't die with just with, with Chadwick. That's not how you honor him. I don't know, Brian. What, you, what, what are your thoughts? So I thought the article dropped a lot of nuggets here. I think people are reading it a certain way. I'm not as convinced that that's true. So first off, shooting in July, the article said the shoot is six months long. That is long. Most films, I would say, is three, even big budget films. A lot of films are like three months, maybe four. Six is long. So Brian Coogler's why, why so long? It. So that's the I was question. Why so long? So what? The other thing to me is, if they were going to take a real left turn and totally re, this also tells you if they're committing to a July shooting date that they have a story for yeah. something like this. There are other films and other studios where I would say, eh they could just show up and they they might not have a story. They're just going to go with it. I don't think Ryan Coogler is doing Black Panther 2 unless he knows. Of course. I don't, why would you want to put yourself in a situation where you don't know what the hell is happening? Which tells me, to your point, 
I don't think they changed their plan that whatever script and story they intended to tell coming out of Black Panther 1, I think they intend to largely follow it because had they intended to really rewrite and start from scratch, I don't think they're committing to a July 2021 shoot. So I think they feel like whatever they have in hand, they're ready to go with. Now, the article says Shuri's going to have a more prominent role. I think people are reading that as she's going to take over the mantle. I don't necessarily see it that way. I, she, As I said, I think there's a possibility you see her don a version of the costume or and, and adopt the powers at points in the movie, but I don't interpret that as T'Challa is not in this movie. I would not read that from that article. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I take more from it that it means that the story they had in mind to tell from the beginning seems largely intact, give or take kind of the normal amount of revisions, and they're going with it. Now, they did reference the uh, Tena Huerta, who's in, who was one of the stars of Narcos Mexico, apparently is one of going to be one of the new villains. So that'll be the next speculation. What villain did they choose for 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 this, and, and who is he playing? But um, I, I I honestly thought they were going to take a little more time. So this tells mm-hmm. me that they're pretty confident, and it also tells me, look, I mean, maybe they already know, and it just hasn't leaked yet. Craven. Well, no, I'm saying a casting announcement for T'Challa. I think. It, no, either, but, but who the, the 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 guy from that they they they're working with the Spanish dude? Oh yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I don't know. The speculation is going to be who is he playing? So it's. But we also heard rumors pre- prior a long time ago that you know possibly the Submariner may show up that and he may be a villain. Who knows? He might be Doom. Who knows? So. But obviously, it's going to be something big. And obviously, from this article, we can't really. Um, take that sure is going to be the black panther going forward she may don the suit but she won't be i don't know i don't know but listen there's just so much story to tell with t'challa i think it means t'challa's in the in this i, I just think if, if he was not going to be in the story at all they would have had to rip everything up and really kind of mm-hmm. redo it and i think if they're staying on schedule it i'm guessing that that means that he is going to be recast and 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 in this yeah. I think people shouldn't jump out the window if they do recast. They should just, you know, I think I'd be grateful if they just, you know, they recast and 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 just keep going with the storyline because I know there will be more and more stories. It's just still too many big events. Like I'd like to see Black Panther marry and storm on screen. You crazy? You that's that's momentous right there. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. Nah, there's still too much story to tell. Let's keep it going. DC News. Obviously, we already spoke about Wonder Woman going to HBO Max. Uh, Again, it was about that time. What are we going to see? Listen, the more and more I see it, the more and more I'm not like so um, maybe because it's been out for so long and and we haven't gotten it because this is this is the effect that you'll get by any further delay like I'm you know I've already seen what you've shown me you ain't showing me much and all I'm keep hearing is delays uh, you know I'm losing interest here so this decided to go to HBO Max do you have anything else to add to this on the one Norman side, no. I mean, I, you know, I, I still am a little bit nervous. As I, say, I think I've said before, as of the quality of this film, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I can be proven wrong. Kristen Wiig yeah. is Cheetah. I'm a little skeptical. I have my doubts. Mm-hmm. I think the comedic aspect of Steve Trevor as the man out of time versus Diana as the woman yeah. out of time. I'm a little nervous. There's too much of that in the trailer. Yeah. You know, but I mean, anytime, anytime Gal is on screen, I mean, she, she just is a magnet you know and it's yeah. hard for her to be bad so i think mm-hmm. the downside's probably limited i just i'm a little bit nervous that this isn't a step up yeah. from the first movie and as good as the first movie was there were things about it that i thought could have been better namely that i thought the final showdown was mm-hmm. a little too zack snyder verse ish versus you know i think what what could have been so we'll see but uh, I mean, I'm hopeful. Like I said, I'll, I'll I'll be front and center to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, I'm I'm definitely there. I'm, I'm yeah. definitely looking to see, looking forward to seeing uh, Cheetah because 
that may be the opening that we get towards Thundercats. I said it right there. <laughs> Stallone. He is rumored or is confirmed. Confirmed. No, confirmed. That's confirmed. We don't know who he's playing. Yeah. But, who yeah. do you think he's playing? I have no idea. I've been trying to figure this out. Like who's in, who's sort of an older kind of rough and tumble character that would fit into the Suicide Squad team or sort of satellite to the team. I couldn't think of. It's not a big part, obviously, but yeah. You think just alone is like, hey, put me in? <laughs> no, I see. I don't think he would do a nobody, right? He, yeah, he'd yeah. Be somebody in the universe. The thing is, Stallone is Stallone. It's hard for me not to see Stallone, and it sort of takes me away. Like you putting Stan Lee in the films and cameos doesn't bother me, yo. This is his. He started this, yeah. you know. And I and I, and it's always cool. Who, is this guy going to be the guy running around doing cameos? No, I'm not saying that, but Stallone, he doesn't, for me, he can't be anybody else but Stallone. And that's what is like, what role is he going to play? I don't know. It, it hopefully is interesting, man. Hopefully is interesting. Amber Heard is refuting the Aquaman 2 rumors that she's out. As you know, there's been all this stuff going on with Johnny Depp and, and, and she said this, he said that, you know. And she, Amber Heard, doesn't, you know, there are people that don't like her. There's been... Uh, you remember the Snyder Cup when they, they had these these sign up sheets and stuff? They had million. We got one of those for her. People yeah, signing one, up. One point four million <laughs> signatures. I'm counting on that. I, I looked the other day. So yeah. This is. This is for me. Not going to end up well. Because if you got enough people saying that they don't, that's that. If you got enough people that saying, I don't want her in the movie. And if you put her in the movie, I might not go see it. That's dollars at the end of the day. And if it's enough dollars to make you uncomfortable, WB. They're going to make some moves. So Amber Heard, I think is just making noise and clapping back pretty much so what do you think yeah look i mean the way i understand the petition is actually you know there are petitions all the time but i think yeah. the way i understand this petition it really centers on the content of the court case between her and johnny depp and yes. to your point we're not here to adjudicate what happened we have no idea yeah yeah but what we do know is that johnny depp has already <clears throat> been asked to resign and has resigned from fantastic beast 3 where he was the prime villain because of the content of the case you think that affects My them understanding was that you think that 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 decision to get him out will affect them that movie yeah, I think so. I mean, I still think Depp had star power. Yeah. I mean, as, as you know, I, still, I mean, there's a, I mean, it, it were three movies in, you yeah. know, and you know, and the rumors that Mads Mikkelsen might replace him. Who knows? But anyway, that, yeah. the point is, it's a similar idea on this side: is that it's it's not about Amber Heard as Mira that's being petitioned. It's about Amber Heard because of this case. That yeah, is yeah, 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 so, yeah. You know, I I throw it back to you, which is. You know, so her quotes basically say, hey, I'm still part of the family. Everything's good. We're good to go. Do you see her as essential to no. this franchise? No. So no. where would you put odds that the studio asks her to leave by the time we start filming? If this movement continues if, to escalate. If we hear a date. If we hear a date. Soon after, we're, we'll probably hear something of whether she's in or she's out. Right now, it's hard to say because they haven't said anything. We don't even got a, a start date on shooting this thing. I, I still think that this movie probably doesn't get done. I don't know. I think Jason Momoa is looking for a way out. <laughs> this is your biggest take. You're taking a billion-dollar 
initial film and you're basically saying the sequel doesn't even get off the ground. I don't think that's ever happened. Because Jason Momoa doesn't... He, he, I don't even think he, he, he liked Aquaman. He likes what's going on in Marvel. Who doesn't? <laughs> and Jason Momoa, he's, the, he's like, he likes good... He, I, listen... I think I think the money will be there, and I think it'll get done. Oh think- yeah, the money they're going to pay him a bunch. It'll be a it'll be crazy to hear how much they pay him. That would be interesting. How much? But I but I I asked the question because I share the view, which is Amber Heard is not in my mind indispensable. Like you could definitely make that move. I think in some you know I think in some ways you could argue the character Depp was playing in the Fantastic Beasts universe was a little bit, will be tougher to re- redo than, than Mira. I think, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I mean, like Mira was in Aquaman 1 a lot. I don't think Amber Heard did a bad job, but at the same time, I don't think she delivered, a, I don't think the part was like a pantheon a memorable, part where yeah, you walked no. out of there being like, she stole every scene nah. she was in. So, yeah, I mean, I think if they bring back Amber Heard, fine. I mean, as in terms, just from the standpoint of the part, you know, yeah. okay, fine, that's continuity. Yeah. If they wanted to go in a different direction, I, I don't think Aquaman oh, two rises or falls based on yeah. that decision. Yeah. Constantine, like I, I said this before, you know, I wasn't a big fan of the first film. I can't even say that because I don't think I even watched the first film. I've seen him in other uh, animated shows uh, or movies, I should say, and uh, with uh, Justice League Dark and then the Justice League. I I, I don't get the titles. It was a dope movie. It was a dope movie. Uh, Justice League Dark Apocalypse, I believe it was called. Um that I, I liked him in that, um, and I'm and I'm going to watch the original Constantine with uh, Keanu Reeves, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and and see what was that all about because uh, I, I think the character is cool. I just wasn't interested because you know after a while, for me, Keanu Reeves is Keanu Reeves. He's he's been hitting right now. He's been he's he's, he's, he's you know, but there was a stretch there was like, no, nah, no, nah, this ain't gonna work for me. So. So to give people the background, so Peter Stormare, who played the devil in Constantine, and who I guarantee everyone who's watching this show has seen Peter Stormare in, he's been in almost everything. He's a quintessential, like, sixth or seventh build actor who kills kills it. Yeah. Um, he tweeted out something to the effect that this was going to happen. So we don't have, like, a studio confirmation of this, but it is one of the actors saying that it's happening. Yeah. So I think the originals aged better than people remember it caught Keanu two years after the Matrix trilogy and I feel like at that point seeing him in another black and seeing him in another black and white suit it basically looked a lot like Thomas Anderson except now he was exercising demons and smoking a cigarette as opposed to being Neo and wearing sunglasses so but it caught some there were so it had like Tilda Swinton was in it, like when she was still on the front side. Shia LaBeouf, a young Shia LaBeouf was in it. He was pre- so they had like a, a good cast and it was an interesting premise. But we obviously in 2005, the superhero genre was not what it was. I mean, we hadn't even gotten Batman Begins yet, we had no MCU, so it kind of was lost in this like yeah. in between region. And so I actually I'm assuming if this is happening, it's because it's found a second life either in, it is on cable decent amount, you know, maybe in streaming. Um, but I think to your point, this is as much about the fact that Keanu has aged so well because of the John Wick franchise, mm-hmm. you know, you have like Bill and Ted and just, you know, his cameo in that rom-com on Netflix and like everything about him now, everyone loves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want so to I think there is probably some steam to do something like that and oh by the way matrix 4 right he's back from matrix yeah. 4 so i think ah. you know, there's yeah yeah so i think there's a little bit of hey why not revisit this maybe we release this movie five years or ten years too early basically and now if we go back and do it there's a bigger audience yeah. for this type of film. okay definitely definitely yeah uh so yeah i mean i'm gonna check it out and uh yeah people you know love keanu man they, they want to see him in everything yeah 
they, they've been you you've heard people wanting wanting to, him to be Silver Surfer, uh, Adam Warlock, a whole bunch of characters, or oh, Ghost Rider. So yep. you know, now we know he's in Constantine, and now thank God he's not the Silver Surfer, Ghost Rider, or any other Marvel characters. Because to me, it's Keanu Reeves. Like Keanu Reeves, he's dope, but I want to get into that world. I don't want to see Keanu Reeves. And he's already dope in John Wick. He most likely will be dope in the Matrix. So the, he's already doing a lot of dope stuff. Uh, he, is, he is not the first name people come to mind, but like if he does something big in the superhero genre that hits, is he the greatest action star of like the last 30 years? I'm just going to throw it out there because you say he's going to have point break, Speed, Matrix trilogy, John Wick franchise. I mean, and then if you say he hit, let's say assume he hits something, whether it's Constantine two or he joins the MCU or does something big in superhero genre that's that's action based. Like, I don't know, but he's got he he's got a he's got a crazy resume. Oh, There's yeah. not a lot of guys that have that. And we I don't mean, think of him as like a purebred action. Yeah, star. you would you would. I mean. I, I I would put him up against Tom Cruise and, and, and some other action stars, but he certainly you can make the case as one of the biggest action stars ever. Uh, so we'll see, man. We'll see what this movie is gonna uh, uh, bring. Uh, I'm sure people are excited for it. Yeah. Snyder cut. We did a spotlight show. But we're gonna do it again. You know why? Because <laughs> we he had gets a... so much news from Zach every day. He is the best for this. I give him so much credit. He is the best for this. He, yeah, he, yeah. he knows how to talk to fans. I, I will say that he's great. He's great at that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's doing podcasts and shows with really like obscure uh, YouTubers and podcasters that we don't know, and he's going on these shows and making these shows big. So. You should ask him on. Well, he, maybe he'll do the spotlight with us, and that yeah, would be. That would, you know what? I'll send it. Let's see what he does. Let's see. <laughs> that would be crazy. If you say, sure, I'll do it. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. If he sees our other shows, he's going to go in. But <laughs> let's see. Um, so we get Martian Manhunter. We got some. And, and we talk about Martian Man on a Martian Manhunter on our spotlight show, but we'll talk a, a little bit about him here. You know, it's not a big surprise. We knew that he was to be a part of the ongoing vision of Zach, but obviously that was cut short. And you have to ask yourself, and I'm sure you've asked yourself, Brian. Where the hell were you? <laughs> Come on, man. A dude with your power, man. Like, you remember that scene when in, 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 in Endgame or Infinity War and Scarlet Witch comes down and just wipes everybody out and 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 one of the Dora Milaje, I forget the lead, the the lead, the the, the leader of that that group of the Dora Milaje. Oh the, the Wakanda. The Black Order? Yes. Um, the black girl, Okoye. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of, uh, of, of the Wakanda Warriors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She said, what were you doing up there all this time? When she came down and just wrecked everybody. And because they've been struggling and all, all of the time, all that time she was up there and she could have been helping out. So where were you, Martian Manhunter? Then we get some leaks of Steppenwolf. Oh, by the way, I got, I thought of only one way they could retcon that to steal it. I actually thought about it. For man, for man, Marshall Man. Because so, we know Harry Lennox is yeah. Marsh. He he is General Swanwick and he is Martian Man. So the only thing I came up with for you on this was that the actual General Swanwick has to die. And then John Jones replaces General Swanwick. So the world thinks General Swanwick is still alive but it's actually Martian Manhunter. Cause that's the, if they don't do that, then to your point, it means that in Man of Steel, yeah. ordered the gunships to fire on Superman in Smallville. Yeah. He didn't do anything when the world engine was destroying the 
He didn't do anything during BVS when Doomsday was tearing up Metropolis and apparently didn't do anything during Justice League when the world was being sort of overrun by, by the mother boxes in Steppenwolf. But so that's the only way out I found was like actual General Swanwick dies, mm-hmm. which means that's the character we saw in all the prior films. Yeah. And then John Jones, for whatever reason, has one scene with him where he copies him yeah. and then replaces him. And that's I, the only way I can think of to get out of it. That's the only way. Otherwise, it makes no sense, to your point. Yeah. A Batman scene. He douses Martian Manhunter with gasoline <laughs> and is holding a book of matches. And he asks him, where were you? <laughs> and he dangles the Oreo cookies. No, no, no. no. <laughs> That that's a Batman moment. That you got to think about that, Zach. Anyway, <laughs> then we get this leaked photo of Steppenwolf, which to me looks like a dope video game villain. The question for this, for Zack Snyder is, or not for Zack Snyder, but for the Snyder Cut, and for those people who think that this movie is going to be the best thing they've ever seen. How much better will this be? Obviously, we have supposedly two and a half hours of new footage, right? Um, yeah, so Zach said he originally imagined this as six chapters, even though we're getting it in four parts, and that this the, whatever cut was shown to the studio originally, which was about four hours, he has more footage than that. Even. Okay. So that's why the new stuff is only four to five minutes. He already has the tapes of... Um, of the other kind of two and a half. I mean, it's not even two and a half hours. It really, because if he's not using any of the Joss Whedon stuff, it really is just a straight four plus hours of new stuff. That's what he's saying. Yeah. So, what? What? The, what this, was there some other news regarding Snyder? Well, he wants the movie in black and white, which is why the new trailer was in black and white. Are he you- said his perfect vision of this movie is in black and white. What do you think about that? I mean, I don't think he's going to be allowed to do it, um, but I don't know. What did you think of the trailer? The trailer was in black and white, so that's kind of, in theory, the visual he'd be I, I I watched it, and I was like, there's nothing really new or certain things. I was looking for some newness. The fact that it was in black and white, to me, it looks like well, he just wanted to show the trailer in black and white and that we're going to see this in color. If I see all this in black and white, it's like, this some sort of gimmick? What What is this? Yeah. I think I prefer color. I think when I think of the Justice yeah. League, the colors matter a little bit. You know, the, the blues and reds and Batman. now we're getting black, straight up black and white, <laughs> no yeah. colors. I think it's tough. I mean, Steppenwolf. You know, look. I mean, the issues with Steppenwolf have nothing. I mean, people want to say he did. He looked cheesy in the first version, and now he looks a little more fierce. It's like, look, the core issue with like Steppenwolf that. has nothing to do with how he looks. It has to do with the character. So. I looked at the image and I was like, this kind of looks a little bit the same, just with more spikes and a little more armor, but yeah. it doesn't answer the question, which is, does the new footage change how we connect to this character and think about him as a villain? So, uh, How much better this will be? For Steppenwolf, for the movie, how much better will this be? I don't know. I mean... The curiosity is certainly there. The curiosity is certainly there. I definitely do want to see it. And if, uh, damn, it's too bad that we got to re- redo that spotlight because we said a lot of good stuff about Zach. I will say one thing that's cool about Wonder Woman coming to HBO Max is that we might get a chance to actually see how many subscribers sign up to see that movie oh, yeah. versus how many subscribers sign up to see Snyder Cut. I, I'm taking the... I would say can be over on Snyder Cut. I think Snyder Cut's oh, yeah, going to be yeah, yeah, definitely. I think so, too. That's definitely the most anticipated piece of content. Like, not even Marvel can compete with it. No. Yeah, I agree. Um, That was it for DC News, man. That's oh, like, we have one more. Batman show. Batman. Gotham PD. HBO Max. Something that we were anticipating waiting for I was very excited to see what Gotham year one for Batman would have looked like in this world of Matt Reeves we're still going to see something compelling but we 
but you know now that we know that mr terrence winter is no longer a part of the project due to creative differences which you know it happens you know it happens you and i brian may talk about a character let's say we were doing the movie and i and you say batman needs to kill people and tear people's head off and i'm like nah man i'm uh, it, that's not batman <laughs> You know, we we can agree to disagree and and agree to go our separate ways. I don't know. Maybe sometime in the near in the later future, after it's all said and done with the with the project, if we get some insight as to what really occurred, who knows when we'll get that. But I'm sure it'll come out at some point. But is this a big blow to uh, Gotham PD? Oh, it's hard to say. I mean, I guess the silver lining is it happened far enough in advance of us getting the series that it's not like they're going to have to take existing footage and course correct and do all that stuff. So they have a chance to wipe the slate clean or, or not or, or do whatever. But mm -hmm. I mean, I do have questions as to where the differences were, right? In the sense that this is a this is supposedly set in a universe that Matt Reeves has already created, which would sort of point you to, well, isn't everyone already on the same page about the vision for this universe basically yeah. so where was the conflict and i you know so it's a and this is terrence winter obviously has a pedigree in, in you know in sort of in television so you know i think that's a little disappointing that we won't get to see his version of it but i think the real answer to this question is well who's coming on next i think we've seen yeah. past, like sometimes sometimes a very good showrunner or director gives way to an even better one so you yeah. can't totally rule that out and um, we'll have to see who, who, who comes aboard to actually, actually do this. I mean, I don't know in the bull case, maybe Matt Reeves himself will come and do it. You know, we've seen with James Gunn seems to be doing TV and, just and movies at the same time. Why, why can't we get more, more of that? Listen, so I don't know. Terrence Howard. Oh, Terrence Howard. <laughs> Man, every time I think about Terrence Howard, and, uh, Terrence Howard and what could have been with, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Iron Man, or Iron Man, um, War Machine. War Machine. Yeah. Brody. Brody, yeah. I mean, he could have been, he could have, it's just too bad. Anyway, Terrence Winters did not write. I don't know if he assisted, right? I don't know if he was a part of the project of, of the Batman. You know, that movie is still going to be amazing. And if Matt Reeves is involved in the Gotham PD for HBO Max, and it's HBO, they do good stuff. I think this still is going to be a compelling show and one to look out for. And again, I'm going to reiterate what I had predicted in the past. This is the first opportunity for Jeffrey Wright to be nominated and win an Oscar and an Emmy, both for the same character that year. Ladies and gentlemen, I called it. I'm calling it, Put you know, mark this one as, as, as something like to go back to when I said it. You can relive that moment every single time. Um, that was DC news. We we've done a good job so far. I don't know if we've gone over an hour. We probably have, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, Star Wars. Yeah. I'm interested in, listen, I'm not against. And if you've been hearing and reading what's been going on with episodes seven through nine with Lucas and his vision and what he intended to do. I read it and I, listen, I would have preferred that over what we got. And if they decided to do something about it, I wouldn't mind getting it. What were your thoughts? So this is reference as a book out in which Lucas talks a lot more about his vision for the trilogy. Um, and in this day and age, the Lucas cut, it's not even Lucas cut. This would be like the ret This would be like the multiverse Lucas trilogy of this. We can't just, we you just can't leave the Skywalkers alone. Listen, I think the, the central question that he asks in that, is really interesting which is this idea of 
take the kind of universal ramifications of Return of the Jedi where the Empire falls and explore what happens to all these worlds in the immediate aftermath of that. So not 30 years later, which is what they ultimately did, where they kind of ran it back, played the hits, and yeah. the First Order basically is the Empire just with a bigger base or what have you. Yeah. But actually explore the fallout, which is a lot closer, I think, to what the Mandalorian does. Yeah. Because the Mandalorian, a lot of times they're on these planets where you see remnants of the Empire, remnants of the Rebellion, right? And you're seeing the consequences of these lawless planets after the system has kind of fallen apart. So I actually think the Mandalorian is kind of exploring the white space that Lucas kind of is talking about. Yeah. But look, I mean, the parts of it that I think we, you know, it, uh, the biggest what if that you read in there is, is, is I think in my mind, it's sort of Luke redeveloping and training the Jedi, which is training the Jedi Academy and rebuilding it, which is so canon to Star Wars and we yeah, never got yeah. to see it. And yeah. it's a shame we didn't. Um, now, obviously, it was a very Leah-centric trilogy, which, you know, Carrie Fisher, rest in peace, he wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. Um, but she was really the, it was sort of in charge. Can she rule without being a dictator? Yeah. Like, that was sort of the question for her. Yeah. And then I thought the other thing was Darth Maul as the central villain. So the confirmation of what Clone Wars did and sort of bringing him back from the dead in, in Phantom Menace, Lucas said he would have been the central villain that kind of went into the criminal underworld and united everyone sort of in a supersized version of what we got in the animated series and would, would become sort of the the palpatine of the new series and then he would have a he would have darth talon which was going to be his his protege who would wind up wind up fighting and then also he did he did lucas said he, apparently the one agreement they had with the what what we actually got was that luke would would die in the middle episode that apparently was in there spoiler hey. words, but Luke Skywalker would die in, in the episode eight that he envisioned. Yeah. So I, I tend to think Lucas is probably at a point where he can't, I think it may be too late for him to really bring this, you know, to fruition. But now that this is out there, I mean, <laughs> there's going to be, there's going to be outcry. There's going to be outcry for these movies to be made. So yeah. I, I wonder what, and what are your thoughts on it real quick on, the pot, not even the possibility, because I don't even think they're thinking about it. But would you mind, or would it bother you if they say, "Yo, let's recast and really do this"? Um, that's a that's a bold move. If they were to think about doing something like that, well, so here, here's what I would say: is if they were going to do it, and if, if Lucas says, "Hey, I'm I'm too old at this point to really direct," and you know, I don't know that we want him directing all the movies um the guy who should do it is sitting right in front of them and it's Fabro. because look at the mandalorian he, he he every every week i watch that show i'm like this is the star this is star wars the way it's meant to be but it's also got enough new in it to like feel like you're 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 seeing some other things like Hell if yeah. they choose anybody else to run this project they're out of their minds because they have the perfect guy and he's doing it every week and like by the way we talk about you know some of the dc stuff and some of our the marvel stuff and how characters are introduced bo katan i'm just gonna say that is how you take a beloved canon character and translate it onto the screen don't mess around you you go get the same actress who voiced her Make her look exactly the way she did in the show. Give her the same personality. It's 30 minutes in and out. You teased it. You saw everything you wanted from Katie Sackhoff. And you're just like, this is great. It's everything I thought it would be. You're in that world, man. You're in that world. But you're seeing, you're seeing it live action. It's like seeing that. If that doesn't make you go back to the animation shows, the Clone, War, Clone Wars, and want to see that, to see what... because. These things are connected, obviously. And so there's history in the Clone Wars that you may want to be privy to if they continue moving forward with this sort of thing, right? And they kept so, it pretty much the same. I mean, when she goes on that rant, um, talking about the Darksaber, talking about Moff Gideon, you know, you get her roots in Mandalore. Like, they kept everything pretty much down the center. They were like, look, the formula works. People like this character. We don't need to mess around with the creative. We're just going to give the people what they want. Yeah. A lot of stuff is happening. 
you know, and there's stuff that there are possibilities if you, I guess, if the money is right enough and, and, and if people are willing to do it. Um, 2021 is going to be a very, very, very jam packed as this show was of content. And it's going to be a good year for entertainment, for the studios. A new experience is coming on, is coming, and we just have to deal with it. And hopefully, they they give us a new experience, and um, hopefully, you know, people got the money to to pay up for these tears because they're not going to be what they are right now. That's why. $7.99 is affordable. <laughs> but if you want this, you got to give us this. Yes, I'll do that. As long as you give me great content, I'll do that. But you're still saving money. I yeah. think if you compare it to, as we've talked about, how many movies did you take your family to in a given year? And what did you spend every time you went to the movies? Yeah. I bet if you add that up, and compared to what they're going to ask you to pay, you're probably saving a little you're bit of money. Saving, you, they, hopefully, they get they they show that somehow to people so that they can see, like, oh yeah, you're right, you know, because they, people ain't got time to think about that sort of thing. But um, you know, and and DC is finally, I think we're speaking about it more in a positive light nowadays, and not the mess that it was. Previously, if you listen to our other shows, we've gone in on DC. Even prior to Brian was a listener at some point of the show, and he saw and he and I'm pretty sure he 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 heard the distaste that we had for DC um, because of the decisions that were made for these characters, the storylines. And they were just doing stuff. Now there seems to be a little bit, be a little bit of some organization, right? Um, and even if it's not in continuity or they, they belong or, or they're in the same universe, there's still interesting things happening. I think if you it, it, look, let's not overthink it. If you give talented filmmakers room to operate and let them cook you will get content. So yeah. James Gunn, Patty Jenkins, Matt Reeves, you know, yes, even, you know, let's hope Zack Snyder delivers, but like if you give them the resources and you give them the freedom mm -hmm. to deliver the vision that they have in mind, most for the most part, and there's a variety to that. Yeah. Uh, and, let, and let's put Todd Phillips in there as well. Joker, obviously phenomenally successful. You will get content that people want to see. Yeah. So I think that yeah. you're getting a whether it's because of the transition and all the restructuring that's going on, but it it does feel like the reins on the DC side have loosened a bit. It feels like the filmmakers have more authority and more ability to kind of do what they want right now, and that's that's leading us to be excited. I think about what we're getting. But do what they want that's pleasing to us the fans not Sorry, doing correct correct not, not doing everyone craziness doing i'm saying people with like people with talent people with skill people with sense if you give them freedom they will not abuse it you give the wrong person freedom yeah you're gonna get you're gonna get exactly, exactly. Gun, but yeah um real quick because this is the end of our show because we've gone on and i think we've done a hell of a job and dissecting a lot of these topics um we also hear rumor of zach snyder wanting to do a freaking uh batman returns dark knight returns dark knight returns we're not gonna get the fight between superman and batman again are we Oh, I, I read that and I said, I, you can't, man. You, you already did it. What you put him are in the, you, you doing? put him in the tank suit. You did the whole fight. You, you, what what, what are you doing? What do you want to do? What are you like? See, this is the, you, at, to your point. You let people with the, the wrong people do stuff, whatever they want. This is, you know, what is he doing? What This is the problem that I have. I have nothing against Zack Snyder. I, I like some of his movies, but this decision making of, of, of 
doing something you already did. How you're gonna change the Dark Knight Returns somewhat. You're definitely certainly we're gonna see him fight against the the, the, the gang members or whatever the the what are they what are they called? Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I forget. Yeah, I forget. But I what, haven't read the comic in a long time. So, yeah. yeah, did you saw the movie though, right? The two parter. The yeah, two part. Yeah. Where Peter Weller, I think, was uh, yes. was Bruce yes. Wayne. In that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, my, my my other thought when I saw that was, I don't know how long he's been thinking that, and maybe it was just a response oh, wow. to a fan think... question. Yeah, but immediately, my it just it just goes back to a point you and I have raised before, which is if you if you dreamed of that, then why didn't you do World's do Finest? Batman versus Superman, because then you would have been able to do Dark Knight Returns yes. yeah, at a later right. date if that worked. So I don't know, but yeah. listen, don't get crazy. Just because you're gonna get this right, and then let's get this might... right first. How about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Let's worry about this we'll first. Talk. Not, but you know what is W gonna be at this point? Is WB? Handcuffed and and saying no to Zach. I don't know. I still think he's getting part two of Justice League somehow. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's going to happen with the subscriber I, I, numbers that are going to roll in. Yeah, I think I think, it's, so I think something's going to happen there. Of course, of course. If you if you bring in subscribers, let's talk. Yeah. If you're not, then sorry, we got to go. You know, well, folks. Thank you for listening to us this long. I uh, hope you got some information, some valuable information into this world. If you're not uh, on the up and up like we are, if you, you know, there's a lot of information to digest. We digest them and we tell you what's going on. So if you come every week, I'm going to try to put out these, you know, you know, Clark Kent, man, Clark Kent is a B.I. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and we got to do our Clark Kent. Um, but I'm trying, I'm trying to like this, this episode, I'm going to try to put out real quick. Um, but thank you once again, please be safe. Um, you know, it's Thanksgiving. Be conscious of what you're doing and how you're doing it and what you're going to do. Because, you know, obviously this is the time of the year that you, you everybody gets together, right? And and getting together is proven to be, as of late, uh, a problematic situation. So take care of yourselves. Um, again, hit that like because it really helps the channel. I don't understand. Hitting that like button is like you giving me $5 every week. <laughs> I don't know why has it become that, that like to like, yo, just hit that like, you know, if you, if you're here for like 30 minutes, if I entertained you for 10 minutes, give it a like, I don't see what the problem is. Share it with your peoples, uh, hit that subscription, hit that notification bell, and please comment in the comment section below. If you agree or disagree with any of what we just said, if we said something that was incorrect, let us know. Uh, thank you for joining us once again, Brian, any last words? No, I think we covered it, but as you said, you know, certainly hope everyone has a, a, as safe and as wonderful a holiday as they still can for, for Thanksgiving. And, uh, listen, I mean, the rate, at the rate we're going, I mean, I can't, <laughs> be, might be doing like six hour shows by December. I don't know, but, uh, but it's awesome. It's awesome. And, and, and now we have Wonder Woman 84 to look forward to. Yeah, man. Christmas yeah, day. that's, that's, a hey, that's a present. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely a present for me. Uh, I'm going. I'm looking forward to seeing Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, January, no, sorry, December 25th. That's that was very unexpected, but understandable. Understandable. So um, have a good night, everyone, or a good day, or good morning, and uh, see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. <laughs>